Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to add bleed, borders, grommet marks, and file information to a banner in Adobe InDesign and Adobe Acrobat. If you have a design that already has bleed set up on it, great, good for you. But if you don't, you need to add some bleed to it. I'll show you how to do that with pre-flight in Adobe Acrobat. First things first, I'm just going to go up to my properties here take a look I have a 5 foot by 2 foot banner or 60 by 24 inch banner and the goal is today to add the bleed we're gonna put these little grommet marks in the corner and then we're gonna make sure that we put a nice little border along the outside and then we're gonna add some page information down in the hem area so first thing I'm gonna do is add the bleed directly in Adobe Acrobat here so I'm gonna go to my print production I'm gonna go pre-flight I've already created this, but if you were going to create this from scratch, you'd go up to Options, Create Fix Up, and then you would look for Fix Up Category Pages, and the type of Fix Up is Generate Bleed at Page Edges. You want to make sure that have your uh, method set to Mirror Page Objects along edges. I don't do it to edges and corners just because it'll save on the ink by not putting any uh, printing in the corner. Remember, we're going to be hemming this banner along the side. If you don't know what a hem is, it's uh, basically you're going to fold over the edges so that you reinforce the edge of the, sh of the uh, banner sheet so that it doesn't tear apart in the wind when it flops around. And then uh, obviously we're going to add the grommets at some point. <clears throat> so our method here is to mirror the page uh, objects here. We're going to repeat any visible page content. Uh, color space, I just leave it to default, which is CMYK and spot colors. I leave all of this information here as its default. And the only other thing I'm going to change here is the parameter, which I'm going to configure here. You want to make sure you have all left, bottom, right, and top edges checked. And you set your bleed width to one inch. Make sure you're on inches and not millimeters down here. Um, and that will basically set up our bleed to accommodate for the hem. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit Fix. I'll save this under a new name that's just called Bleed. Hit OK. And then you can see here it's added the bleed to the outside of all four edges of the, of the um, banner. So we're all done here in Acrobat. Now we can move over to InDesign. So in InDesign I'm going to go ahead and start a new file. 60 by 24. We want to make sure our margins are set to one inch. This is going to be where we're going to put our grommet marks. And then we want to make sure our bleed is one inch as well because that's where our hem area is for the, uh, for the banner. So I'm going to hit, click uh, Create. And here we have our setup. So I'm going to go here to File, Place. And we're going to place the design that we just set up with the bleed. I hit Open. Make sure I crop to Media. Hit OK. Place it in. I'll center it up. I'm going to right click and make sure my display performance is on high quality. And so now we're all set up with our bleed. I'm going to click on our image here and I'm just going to go up to window stroke. I'm going to add a 0.5 point uh, black stroke to the outside here. Make sure that your stroke alignment is on the uh, inside and then you can click off of that. So now basically what we've just done is we've added a border to the outside so after the banner is printed we'll be able to have a nice little black line that we can use to trim out our border or excuse me trim out our banner from. Now obviously this is not as important with a design like this because we have printing all the way to the edge of the sheet on all four sides but if you had a banner similar to this where you have white space on the top and the bottom you're going to struggle to keep your knife straight or if you put it in a keen cut or, or a, some kind of a cut machine you're going to struggle to keep that banner uh, nice and straight if you're going to be cutting it by hand so it's usually important to put some kind of border around the outside of it so we've done that now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our grommet marks and to do that I'm going to go ahead and grab the rectangle tool <clears throat> I'm going to drag out my box from one edge of the margin to the other. Remember we set this to one inch so you're going to have your 
holes punched one inch basically from the edge. If you feel that is uh, too far in, you can change this to a half inch or three quarters of an inch, whatever you feel comfortable with in your workflow. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add a stroke to this as well. So if I go back to my um, stroke here and I'm just going to go ahead and I want my my grommet marks to be a quarter of an inch. Or actually, I'll probably do one eighth of an inch here. So I'll go 0 0.125 inches. I want to make sure this is stroke is aligned to the inside as well. And as you can see right now, we just have a solid black line. And what we want instead is a, a dot pattern. So you can change the type here. And there's lots of different options that you have. Thick, thin, triple, white diamond. If we click di or, uh, dashed here, or dotted, excuse me, you can see it puts a dot pattern all the way around the outside. Now, that's great, except that we actually want this to be much further apart than where these dots are showing up. So in order to do that, we're going to create a stroke style and put in our settings. So here in, in the little hamburger menu, I'm going to click, uh, click that and click stroke styles. And here I'm going to click new. And I'm going to name this, and I'm just going to call this grommets every two feet. That's kind of an industry standard. You're going to put grommets every two feet for your design. I'm going to change this from the dash to dotted. And then you can see right here, here's a preview of what our pattern is going to look like. What I want to do is space this out to be 24 inches or 2 feet. And now you can see there's much bigger gap in between each one of these dots. And here where it says corners, you want to make sure to leave it on adjust gaps. If you click on none, basically what will happen is it'll just place a dot every 2 inches. So you may end up with a dot that's like right here or right over here in kind of an odd space. But if you click adjust gaps, it basically is going to put all of the dots in the corners first and then work its way around two feet from those positions. So now that we have everything set up, I'm going to click add. And then I'm going to click done. And so now we have our uh, grommet style or grommets every two feet stroke style here. I'm going to click OK. And you can see, obviously, it still didn't do anything, and that's because we have to change our uh, type here. Now, if we look at the very bottom, this is the uh, stroke style that we just created. So I'm going to click that. And if I click off, move this out of the way, I'll hit my W key for the preview here. You can see now I have a dot in the corners here. And then I also have it every two feet across the middle. I, there's no dot over here because... This is a two foot banner, so there's not enough room to place a third dot in here. If you wanted to change this, what you could simply do is go back to your stroke, click your little hamburger again, go to stroke styles, double click on this to edit, and then I can just, with my preview box checked here, I can make changes to this. So let's say I wanted to add, uh, these are too far apart, I wanted to add more grommets. I want to do it maybe every one foot, so if I just go 12 inches, I hit tab. Now you can see there is an additional mark here on the left and right hand side. You can't see the right side because it's underneath here. But along the bottom here, you can see there's a dot here, there's a dot here, here. So it's added additional dots across my banner design here. So if two feet is not, um, is not enough grommets for you, you can uh, adjust it. You can also go in the middle, obviously. You don't have to go 12 inches. You could go you know, 16 inches and it'll space things out uh, appropriately. Again, now we went from three dots on the bottom to five dots along the bottom, and then still there's only the uh, there's no dot in the middle. But anyway, I'm gonna just leave this as 24 inches. I'll click OK, go back here. And so now we have our grommet set up, we have our border set up, we have our bleed set up. Um, the good news about doing it this way with a stroke style, and actually I'm gonna co go back in here and do one more thing if you go into your stroke style, you select that style that we created and we hit save and give it a name like grommets every two feet and hit save. Make sure you put it somewhere on your computer where it's easy to, to load from. Next time when you go in to create a banner, you can just load this stroke style and it'll automatically uh, load up for you to select in your, um, your types. So 
I, I actually even recommend saving this whole file as like a template so you can place a banner design that's maybe a different size. Um, let me take a look at the other side I have here. This, whoops. This one here is 72 by 48. So if I change my design here and go to 72 by 48. Real quick here. Okay, center this up, move it backwards. And I'm gonna grab my grommet pattern here. And you can see as I reshape my box here, it'll add additional grommet marks based on the settings that I chose. So this is a uh, 72 by 48 size banner. So it's gonna place one, two, three, four across the top, three across, across the side. And again, if this is not enough, you could go back into your uh, stroke style and edit it however you want. So let me go back here to my other design. And I'm gonna show you one more thing as far as labeling the outside in the hem area of a banner. So a lot of places when they print a banner, they will also put like a job information or something on the hem area, which is gonna essentially fall on the back side of the banner. So it's not gonna be seen unless you actually take the banner off the wall or from wherever you're hanging from. And the reason most places do this is to one, organize them inside their own shop. Number two, so that their customers have a reference if they want to reorder a banner, they already have a job number, if they have a file name or some other information on there. And I'll show you how to create that information real quick. So I'm just gonna drag out a text box and I'll just give it a 24 point font here. Give it something like uh, uh, Helvetica here. Nice bold. Let's just hit test. That's pretty good. Okay. So with the cursor in your text box, what you want to do is go up to type, go to text variables, hit define. And we're going to define some variables to throw in here. So I'm going to hit new. There's some already in here you can see, but I'm going to hit new. And I'm going to call this uh, uh, file, uh, in, or I'll call it imported file name. How about that? And I'm going to change this from type to uh, metadata caption. And I'm going to uh, leave this under metadata name. It may be on something, something else in yours, but you want to go here to name. And we're going to put text before, and we're going to call this file name. Uh, no text after. You could if you wanted to, but I'll just hit OK. And I'll click Insert. And so you can see here it says file name followed by the PDF that we made earlier. So if I look at my uh, Finder menu here, this is the name of the file. And you can see here back in InDesign, it's placed that name of that file in here. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to space out a couple of spots. I'm going to go back to type. I'm going to go to text variable define, and I'm going to click new. And I'm going to just call uh, this. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to output date, and I'll just call this uh, printed date. Not going to put. Uh, well, I will put text before. I'll just call this printed on. And then the date format here, we're gonna go with time of day. We're gonna go to hour, we're gonna go to minutes, give it a space. I'll put AM, PM, give it a space. And then we're gonna go to uh, day of the year, or let's go with month, or let's do day, day, sorry. Go do day. month and year at least that's how we do it in uh, the US we go month day and then year um, you can put text after it after it if you want otherwise just hit OK and hit insert and then now you have your information here like file name and printed on the uh, exact time and the date so now we can just basically set this information down here in the hem area so i'm just going to put this to one inch 
I'm going to uh, vertically align it center. I'm going to align it center column here. Center it up on the sheet. Put it down in our uh, hem area. And I'm just going to flip it upside down because remember after we hem this up, this is actually going to be flipped up. So uh, this is going to be right side up on the back side of the banner. So this way all the information here will show right side up. So now this is all ready to go. We can go ahead and export this as a PDF, send it off to the press, print it out. And when you're finished, you'll have a nice little outline here of your design. So you can trim it out. You'll have grommet marks so you can punch your holes for your grommets. And then you'll have the information that you uh, wanted to insert on the back side in the hem area. And this will automatically change for whatever... Um, PDF you place into InDesign because this is a text variable. The date and the time will change as well whenever you export it to PDF. So that way if you save this as a template, you import a new design, even if it's a different size, you can just go back into your document setup. You can change the dimensions of your print. Just keep this information here down at the bottom. I would actually even recommend putting it on its own layer just so that you uh, kind of keep everything separate from one another. Same thing for the grommets. I just showed you how if you change the size of your document, it'll automatically add additional uh, grommet marks where it's needed. And again, you can change that easily by adjusting it in the stroke style. So that basically concludes the tutorial. I hope you uh, got some good information out of this. Hopefully it'll help somebody out. As always, if you found it enjoyable, please give it a like, share it, and uh, subscribe if you already haven't subscribed to the channel. Again, I have a Patreon page. I'll link down below. If you have further questions and you want to have a little chat back and forth, feel free to check out the Patreon page. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.